so happy that all of you have come along and have, are sharing this adventure of living in a castle in Italy. And a lot of you have asked what the outside of the castle looked like, because I showed you what the inside is. So I thought that would be really interesting to take you on a tour of our castle home from the outside. And where does it start? From here. That's the entrance, as you can see. And you can look. That bell is about to be ringing in about 10 minutes' time, so I'm sure you're going to be hearing it. And what I'm going to do is we're going to walk over what is originally the moat of the castle because this used to be a Roman camp. The moat, together with the walls, circle almost the entire village, but it's intimate, it's not very large. There are two types of medieval castles, some bristle high up on the hilltops, Others, built on the flatlands, are surrounded by a moat. But there's something all castles have in common, and that's a large gate with a heavy wooden door or a portcullis, which is lowered to protect the village from invaders. This is where the gates would come down in the evenings, and you'd have the torch lights that would come here, so every evening they'd be closing this down. Um, there's a recording of this town, Cordovado, from uh, the 1200s, we have a painting actually in our home. Cordovado still looks today very much like it did when this drawing was done. There's one main road that goes right through it, which is now called the Via Castello, and on either side is artisans' houses and a few castles and palazzos, and that's what it looks like today. Along here used to be where the artisans used to live, so this is where they would sell the food and and uh, all the workers that be living in the town. We have our own little church, which is right there, which I'll be showing you on later on. Because the interesting thing about this little town of Cordovado, or the medieval village of Cordovado, is that the original family still lives here. And we all live together, we're all bunched together in the part of the villa and the houses where the cows lived, and we're in the main villa, and. It, it's like a community, which is actually really nice. So not only are we living in a most wonderful, wonderful home, but we also have family. Ciao, Sergio. Buongiorno. I have to introduce you. So this is Sergio Piccolomini. Buongiorno. He's married to Anna, who is the property of this house. And how many, how many children are there? Nine children, right, who have the houses here? Sergio is married to Anna who's the owner of the property, and who is our landlord. Slowly, during the few months we've been living here, I've been trying to learn all the names of the brothers and sisters, and which homes belong to them. It's taking me a while to get it. Nicolò! Nicolò! Okay. Allora, Piero. Piero. Anna. Anna. Nicolò. Nicolò. Um, Chiara. Chiara. Uh, Riniera. Raniera. Riniera. Ri. Our home is actually part of the villa where Sergio and Anna live. On the right, with the tower, was Rosa's house, which is now where we live. And on the left is the main villa Freschi Piccolomini, which is where Sergio and Anna now live. The original medieval castle was burnt down. And in the 17th century, this beautiful Venetian villa, together with a large park which still surrounds the castle, was created by Sigismondo Cucagna. But what Cordovado is famous for is its gardens, especially its Damascus roses. Okay. It had the, it had the villa, a big, of a villa. House, big, yeah. big house. Because it's see? very feminine here. Yes. I think it's very peaceful here. Yes, very peaceful. You know, and it's very silence. And, and it's very quiet. Nobody talks. And it's too, it's too quiet. <laughs> I'm then talking. <laughs> but my wife doesn't like that I talk. Because she uh, she doesn't talk. No. Well, oh, good, because Nike, you talk. I talk with myself also. <laughs> now, of I've course. got another question. Uh, the, these clocks, because I'm going to do a whole video on these clocks that wake us up all the way through the night, because they ring twice. Why do... The tower clocks ring twice. They read three, what is it? Three yeah, minutes, three minutes before, before the hour, hour. Yeah. and then just after the hour. So like at yes. 11 o'clock, it rings 11 times. Yes, and three minutes And then 11. three minutes yes. after, it rings 11 times again. Yes. 
Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a clock ring twice. However, when Sergio pointed to the sundial which I'd seen, it was been painted on the wall, I discovered it wasn't a sundial at all. It's a sundial. It's a sundial. The, the, the it's night. A, oh, it's a night. It's a moon dial. Yes. You see, it is feminine here, by the way. And the it's very rare. Feminine. The very rare. You don't find. And this is part of the old building because the building has, has been many times. Uh, been renovated. Uh, yes, and restored, and restored and abandoned. Uh, the beauty of Cordovado has ages, and it's just the way I like it. Riniera has this house here, and underneath is a cafe, which is run by Hamid, and also um, one of the brothers named Carlo. This is where we live, in here. but I thought we should say hello to Hamid, so come on in. This is the place to sit in Cordovado in the evening. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. So this is the famous Hamid. And Veronica. And Veronica. With her drinks. And, oh, that's one of the rose drinks, isn't it? Isn't that? Questo, non è la rosa? Si. Si. Posso? So this, the whole place has to do with roses. So this is their drink. Oh. <laughs> the roses here are absolutely wonderful. So this is their wonderful, it's made with rose cordial that Benedetta has made with, together with what? What's in here? Uh, prosecco e sciroppo di rosa. And prosecco, which is wonderful. It's not mine, so I can't drink it. And here is this most amazing, very sophisticated place that sells things from Morocco, because Hamid is from Morocco. And all of these products are made from roses. Because the roses of Cordovado are one of the most famous roses in all of Italy. The person who made these rose products is Carlo, who is Anna's brother. And the person who made the gardens and the roses of Cordovado famous is Anna's sister, Benedetta. She's busy in the gardens from morning until the evening. This is her vegetable garden. And now she often appears at our doorstep with baskets of tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and everything that's come from the garden, which is fabulously delicious. It was she who could answer all my questions, like why the clock tower always struck twice. The reason? Because in medieval times, no one wore watches. So that it was like an alarm clock with a snooze button attached, ringing a few minutes early to warn everyone, three minutes later to say, the hour is here. And what's the story of, of <laughs> this? It's a moon meridian, right? It's a moon meridian. We really don't know. But when I asked her about that sundial, which I then discovered was a moon dial, she was stumped. She didn't know. And then we found out the answer from behind the camera. This would be the month. What? Month. Maybe, yes. This would, this would be basically, even though it doesn't like, seem to make a lot of sense, I would say where the direction of the moon is and when it rises, let's say, in the middle of a certain month it's tilted. So the sun and the moon rises in different places in winter and summer. So it might be that in winter it rises too much in the back and then there's no shadow here. And then in summer it moves more here so there's a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you, that's how you know. Old bushy trees that's right in front of our window, Benedetta tells us, is from the early Bronze Age. This tree is 3,000 years old. Almost. I don't know, really, but it's very old. And it's still alive.
No wonder its branches are supported on crutches, I guess just like an old man. But I remember, so the story is that uh, in this area of Venice, they would create um, silk, right? Yeah. And so this was all mulberry trees that they died, but this last one is yes. still here. They leave it in this house. <laughs> As I spoke more to Benedetta, I discovered the reason she created the Rose Labyrinth was to inspire people to slow down, relax, and reflect, which are all things I think are so important to do in today's fast-paced technological world. Goethe sosteneva che la, la rosa rappresenta come l'uomo di Leonardo. And he said, rose, he said, and the rose is the perfect harmony between the sky and the earth. Nel profumo, nel colore, nell'energia della rosa. The energy, the color, the perfume. E questo ti ti aiuta a ritrovare la tua armonia tra il cielo e la terra. And it helps you find veramente grounded. grounded. It took four years, but she, with the help of all of her family, did it. And so the world's only rose labyrinth was born. And during the month of May, which is when the Damascus roses are in bloom, people come from all over the world to experience this homage to the healing power of nature. And it's right on our doorstep. I kind of think of Cordovado as my inside world. And the town that surrounds us is like the outside world with the noise of traffic and the troubles that come with daily life. But with the help of the Rose Labyrinth, Eric and I can always find a way to come home again, inside ourselves, centered between the sky and the earth. And that's one of the great secrets of being with yourself in a new way that brings lightness and joy no matter what happens. Buongiorno. Vuoi un aiuto? You sure? <laughs> okay. This is Lourdes, by the way. I'm doing it. <laughs> Hi. Ciao. So that was the tour of our Italian castle home. I hope you really enjoyed it. You know, we have the unbelievable good fortune to be able to rent uh, a place in this, in this very, very unusual home, which is a medieval Italian castle that has been transformed into a community by the 10 children of this wonderful matriarch who had the foresight to say, I want to keep the family together, so I'm going to give them a house, each of them a house in, the, in this village. And then when they retire or when they have children, they can come back and they can all live together. And because unfortunately, or fortunate for us, one of the daughters died, we are living in her home, that's Rosa. And so um, we're being able to live not only in a wonderful castle, but also with this family. And so, you know, things always seem to work out. I just wanted to share you that if you have something called a cosmic kick, that's what I call it, and it's if life sort of shakes you, picks you up by the feet and it turns you upside down and it shakes you to the, to the, to the core of yourself, and then, you know, don't worry about it. It's part of life. Life does have its ebbs and flows. And this is life's way of saying, you know, this isn't your path. You can, you can open up to something far greater than you ever could imagine. And that's what we did. That's why we're here. And I'm going to be sharing tips of how I did it with you. I'll be doing two short videos, one on health and one on food, apart from inviting you into our lives. So take care and um, we'll see you next week. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to watch how to start afresh and enjoy a new way of being with yourself and with the world that makes life fun and meaningful at the same time. I love your comments. They've inspired me to share videos on how you too can live this way, no matter where in the world you live. And thanks for watching.